We now begin with the first act of the New Hampshire Radio Theater's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, made possible by a grant from Public Service of New Hampshire. Additional support for this act is from Fleet Bank of New Hampshire. The following story was found among the papers of the late Diedrich Knickerbocker. As we begin, the year is 1825, and some men are exchanging stories in a tavern. And to this day, when the thunder rumbles in the summer afternoon, the people of the old Dutch settlement say it is Hendrik Hudson and his crew at their game of nine pins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a very good story, Irving. I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, knowing the old Dutch the way I do, I'm sure they believe it. Come now, Knickerbocker, what of our wager? Who will pay for all this ale? Not he with the most spectacular story. I dare say even you cannot top that one. Oh, must you be so boastful, Irving? Your narrative made me nearly as drowsy as your Van Winkle chap. <laughs> Concede defeat now. You certainly cannot dream a story which is nearly as unbelievable. Oh, no. It's just that. Unbelievable. I know of a place where ghosts walk the earth. And goblins hunt a man's scalp. Well, the floor is yours, Knickerbocker. There is a place on the eastern shore of the Hudson River, far up from the Tappan Zee, outside of Tarrytown. There sits a beautiful glen, resplendent in uniform tranquility. A drowsy, dreamlike influence seems to hang over the land, and all who visit it come under its power. It was here, some years back, the villagers sent for a new schoolmaster, he was lanky, his hands dangling a mile from his sleeve, and he was easily led by woman and superstition alike. Both were to be his undoing. This is the legend of Sleepy Hollow. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen... Twenty. There, Henry Van Ripper, you'll remember and thank me for this, the longest day you have to live. So you won't mind if I neglect to thank you now? Oh, no, don't look at me with that face. I'm just doing duty by your parents. Spare the rod, spoil the child. I'm sure they wouldn't want me to withhold your punishment. It's not withholding the punishment that smarts. It's the zeal with which you provide it. Yeah, I trust the younger boys will never again find themselves perched on a nail by the seat of their knickers. I promise. Really, where do you farm boys come up with these ways to torment one another? Brom Bones did it to me during harvest. Hoisted me up in the barn by hook and pulley to the back of my britches. Left me hanging there all afternoon, until he let me down and gave me donuts and cider. He laughed, and it got me out of doing any work. Well, I've yet to meet this Brom Bones, but uh, you'll do best by your parents if you stay clear of hooligans. Yes, Master Crane. Uh, wait a moment, Henry. Well, perhaps twenty wax was more than enough for someone your age. I don't like to see young boys treated cruelly. You strike me as a bright lad, a real straight arrow. You try to be kind to the others. You never know when you might need help from one of them. Thank you, sir. Uh, Master Crane, do you have a meal for this evening? Actually, no. My mother is preparing a goose. I saw her dressing it before I left this morning. She really is a good cook, and so is my older sister. I'd love to have a <coughs> sister. Uh, how much older? Fifteen? Sixteen? She'll be eighteen come November. Ooh, well, I don't know if I'm dressed to meet a sister. I have a black suit, but it's hanging at the Dutchess farm now. Perhaps we should stop by on our oh. way. Oh, come now, lead the way. Mother, I'm home. We have company. Oh, yes, child, I can see that. Who is this rather gangly gentleman you brought him with you? Mother, this is... Ichabod Crane, ma'am. I'm Henry... He's Henry's... the new schoolmaster I told you about. Oh, schoolmaster. Well, then, come in, come in, Mr. Crane. I thought I recognized you from Sunday services. I should have known the new face in Sleepy Hollow would have to be you. Ah, this must be your sister. Step into the light so we can have a good look at you. Good evening, sir. My name is Cynthia. <laughs> oh, well, you certainly are a, um, a charming girl with a beauty that is uh, rustic. Thank you. I I'll set an extra place for you at the table. <laughs> good God, Henry, what's wrong with your sister's face? She can make milk curdle. <laughs> Mother was startled by a witch before she was born, and says the hag cursed Cynthia. That's why she's not as pretty as the other girls of Sleepy Hollow. A hag? Well, that is some powerful magic. 
Uh, but it looks more like your mother may have taken up with the scarecrow in your southern field. Oh, you shall be steak for dinner, won't you, Mr. Crane? Oh, please call me Ichabod, and I'll only stay if you insist, Goody Van Ripper. Oh, Goody Van Ripper. Oh, why, that's so New England. And I, I swear there was this ghost riding alongside of me. How else could you explain it? You know I don't give to such foolishness, Peter. What seems foolish to a young man seems not so to an old man, and vice versa. Oh, pay him no attention. Hans, hard work seems to drain the blood from his head. Another word from you, and the three of you can raise the barn by yourselves. Yeah, and who'll help you pick your orchard, your wife or a portly mother? <laughs> what seems portly to a young man seems not so to an old man. Oh, be quiet, Stephen. Be, be quiet, a lot of you. You darling, we have company this evening. What manner is this woman? Five plates at my table and a stranger in my home? But, Father, this is... Uh, Think about Crane, sir. I'm... He's uh, the new schoolmaster. The schoolmaster, hmm. Father. You remember the last schoolmaster, Hans, spending all this time eating Van Horn's food and making time with Van Horn's daughter? I hear they're in Manhattan now. He called me Goody Van Ripper. Goody? Good old woman. That's the tongue of a New Englander. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Connecticut, actually. Stephen Brower at your service, Master Crane. This here is Peter Vanderdonk and Derek Van Bummel. Uh, you were in Connecticut once, Derek, weren't you? <laughs> no, I was in the Connecticut. Our raft sank near White River Junction. Out, you three! My humor for you grows short. Fine. We'll return tomorrow at dawn. Good evening to you, Dame Van Ripper. Uh, good evening, Dame Van Ripper. And what brings you up to the Tappan Zee, stranger? As they say, I'm the schoolmaster. I'd like to think I'm good at it, but it's uh, hard to tell. Mm. I'm sure you're a wonderful teacher. Tell him so, Father. Is that the way you make a living, Master Crane? Your nose in a book all day and drifting from house to house for a meal. Any man who sits at my table must work a day in my field. <coughs> work? <coughs> work? As in labor with my hands? Mm. Oh, that's a rather provocative proposition. Uh, perhaps I could help uh, set the table or put the wee ones to bed. The table's set and the wee ones can put themselves to bed. Oh. But if you can handle an axe with the same power as you handle your tongue, there'll be some stuffing for you this evening. The work it is, then. Very well, here, Van Ripper. Uh, you've got yourself a farmhand. You may call me Hans. Now follow me. Children, what do you think of Master Crane? He'll never wield Father's axe. He looks like a scarecrow. I don't know. I sort of like that kind of look. He, he must be almost as smart as the parson. Ooh, and a man of superior taste. Cynthia, go wash your face and change into your loveliest dress. Oh, it's not every day a schoolmaster comes calling in Sleepy Hollow. And then the soldiers sprang out of the wooden horse when all were asleep and set fire to the city. And that's how they won the war. <laughs> <laughs> what a fascinating tale. Oh, yes, I good. have never heard that in all my days. Nor have I. They must have different books in Connecticut than here in New York. What books do you like to read, Master Crane? Uh, well, I'm a marvelous dancer, if I do say so myself. And I used to read about all the latest steps. Then, quite by accident, I stumbled across a book that utterly fascinated me. What was that? Uh, Cotton Mather's History of New England Witchcraft. It's filled with all sorts of spectacular tales. You mean ghost stories? I read right until the sun has gone down, and then by candlelight. Perhaps I read too much. I sometimes get spooked by a shadow or the cry of an owl. Uh, would you like a fifth helping, Master Gray? Oh, well, if you could spell some more stuff in it, would be delightful. And please call me Ichabod. <laughs> oh, Hans, was Ichabod to help you this evening? He seemed to work up quite a sweat. He began to perspire as I described his chores. And he didn't stop until the dinner bell rang. Oh, but he has proven himself to be a good worker, hasn't he? What are you driving at, uh, woman? Uh, uh, the, uh, the salary provided by the school is not much. It's, it's a pittance, really, or a trifle of a pittance. But in any event, it's not much. As well, I said, it's the it's country it's custom for families of boys being schooled to offer board and lodging to the master. <laughs> it would only be for a fortnight, or maybe more. I've just spent the past week at the Dutchers. They've been most generous. As I said, the revenue is hardly enough for my daily bread. You're your daily bread could feed a militia. You have the appetite of an anaconda. Oh, don't be rude, Hans. We must be hospitable to Ichabod. Mm, I've never had much use for schooling. All my boy needs to learn is right here on this land. But it's true, I could use a hand with those crops the next two weeks. 
We may be better off than the Dutchers, but when daybreak comes, you may see it's not by much. Well, it's settled. I'll board here and do what I can around the house. Uh, perhaps you need some help in the kitchen, Goody Van Ripper. That's woman's work, Master Crane. Oh. <laughs> While you're here, you work in the field. And I mean really work. And another thing, schoolmaster, you'll not be making eyes with my daughter. Father! You drive a hard bargain, but I think I can live with it. Do you need to collect your things from the Dutchers? Yeah, well, all my worldly possessions are here, folded in this kerchief. Just a change of clothes and cotton mother. The Dutchers are going to miss you around their farm, I bet. You no, know, not as much as Goody Dutcher will miss my ear around the table. She seemed to take great pleasure in sharing with me the gossip that came her way. Oh, really? Yes. And did she swear you to secrecy about these tales? Oh, heavens no. I think she was merely fortifying me for my next host. Oh, Ichabod, you must come with me to the quilting circle tonight. We're in the meeting house at eight. Oh, the other women of the hollow will be thrilled to meet you. Oh, I'd much rather hear about Hendrik Dutcher's drinking and ill temper. Oh, and whether he took up with a milkmaid from Terrytown. <laughs> well, he'll be here shortly, and you can ask him yourself. I've seen this Master Crane at service on Sunday. He has an eye for the lasses, no doubt. Afterward, he'll proceed to impress them by reading the epitaphs from the headstones in the cemetery yard. And you should have witnessed the stares he got from the other men for making them look like country pumpkins. Yeah. <laughs> a schoolmaster holds quite a position in the community, Dan Van Ripper. Would your daughter have her eyes on this Icacot Bard Crane as a suitor? Yeah. Mother can only help mm. you. But what strength he holds inside his skull, he loses on the outside of it. Mm. Oh, how the face of a bird and the body of a scarecrow could come together in one. It has to be some form of magic. Oh, like I say, her mother can only hope. Well, well, you place the rind of a pumpkin and a pinch of salt in a pot of tea mm -hmm. and serve it to the schoolmaster on the first night of the new moon. Mm -hmm. Then you bury the leaves in your field mm -hmm. and recite Cynthia's name three times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how I married uh, Abigail off to the Van Shite. Oh, no, 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 no. Take mm -hmm. a swat from his nightshirt oh. and rub it with basil. Mm -hmm. Then place it beneath your daughter's bed for one month, one month. and burn it in a fire of hickory. Ooh, if the smoke is white, they will be together. Oh. But the schoolmaster's not a catch for a young girl. He has no money, must travel from house to house just to make ends meet. Books feed no child. Oh, perhaps. But Ichabod Green is a good man. Yes. Oh, a bit meek, though. Mm. Oh, I dare not say aloud my dream that he'd take my daughter's hand with her... With her. Hag's curse on her face. Oh, so he can read the epithets at the church boneyard. One can only read them in the day, and you won't catch the likes of me there at night. Yes, yes, yes. To break the curse on Cynthia's face, draw mm -hmm. a crucifix from a salve of mud and oh. weave a scat uh -huh. around your christening bed. Mm -hmm. Then boil together the yolk of a robin's egg with your first morning spit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sprinkle in cinnamon and mm -hmm. sulfur with the entrails of a fresh fish. Ooh. Then, by the light of the crescent moon, yes. grind it together with a pestle and mortar with semen from a bull Ooh. and the clippings from her fingernails. Oh. Good heavens, what kind of soup recipes do the women in this hamlet trade with one another? Oh, good ladies, <laughs> this gentleman is Master Ichabod Grimm. Oh. I could tell just by looking at him. Well, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, and might I compliment you all on your sewing? It's, it's marvelous. <laughs> well, I'm Dame Gardenia. This is Dame Van Gilder, How do you do? and the widow Van Dyke. Oh, come by the fire, Master Crane, and tell us your impressions of Sleepy Hollow. There can be no disagreement that the beautiful views of the mountains and the Hudson River have a drowsy, dreamlike influence over this land. <laughs> Anyone who enters this region seems to come under its witching influence, <laughs> including myself. That's because the land was bewitched by a hydro 
Belgium and doctor during its settlement. Mm. Many powerful ghosts are said to be nearby. Eh, I'm afraid, Ichabod, that we town people are given to all sorts of marvelous beliefs. Oh, yes, in yes. trances and visions. Haunted fields and haunted brooks. Twilight superstitious of all kinds. Oh, fascinating. It's just like Cotton Mather. Just like who? Just like whom? No, no, that's what she said. Just like who? Yes. Hmm. If. <laughs> The Reverend Cotton Mather. He wrote a wondrous book of witchcraft and other spectacular tales. Did you know that because the earth is round and spins around the sun, that half the year we're all topsy-turvy, hanging our upside down? (laughs) (laughs) Tell me, tell me more. Tell me more legends of Sleepy Hollow. Ghosts are more likely found in a small hamlet like this. In our cities, the ghosts have hardly had time for their first nap and turn themselves in their graves before their surviving friends have traveled away from the neighborhood. They have no acquaintances left to call on. That's why you'll only find spirits in old Dutch communities like this Ew, one. I've heard the Ox Bay and the river is haunted by the spirits of two lovers who drowned trying to swim across the Hudson. They met in the middle embrace and then went down under the surface. After the rains, you can hear the lovers cry by the babbling brook. Oh, indeed. Oh. Well, I've heard the couple who were courting by the South Ridge when word came of a madman pirate who had escaped the brig at Fort Ticonderoga. When they returned home, they found his hook hanging on the back of their cart. Uh, uh, really? Uh, that's oh, the I oldest know, story in the, the book. Story in the book. Even I heard that. I believe the night before last, I heard a coven of witches moving down the post road beyond the schoolhouse. They were racing spirits and far too joyous to be traveling that time of evening. Mm. That was no witch. That was Brombone. (laughs) Only Brombones and his gang would be gallivanting through Sleepy Hollow after sunset. But who is this Brombones? That's the second time I've heard his name today, and both times associated with mischief. Brom is only having fun. He's a prankster. There's never any ill will to his deeds. He's quite clever. Whenever there's a ruckus in town, who can be sure that Brombones is behind him? Remember when he led Van Hooten's pigs out of their pen? (laughs) He raced them down the meeting house road at midnight. (laughs) Then cleaned it up the next day. Hey, if there's some night even who hear Ichabod, it's probably just Brombones and his gang. Unless it's the Hessian who rides at night from the churchyard. What's that, Widow Van Dyke? You've never heard of the Headless Hessian? No, I have not. You walk these woods since September, and no one's warned you of the Hessian of the Hollow. It's a miracle you're still alive. During the War of the Revolution, a great battle took place on the banks of the Hudson between our militia and a company of loyalists. A Hessian trooper charged our only cannon and was fired upon. His head was taken away by the cannonball before he could cross the covered bridge. Soon after the news of Yorktown reached Sleepy Hollow, the Hessian was seen again. Riding past the church on a bolt of thunder. But this time, the mighty trooper had no head. The Hessian was buried in the churchyard. That's that's where he's mostly seen. He rides back and forth from his grave to the scene of the battle. Perhaps he's looking for his head. Perhaps he seeks another. Ah, the Hessian of the Hollow is always in a hurry. For he must return to the yard before daybreak. Many had seen him from a distance. But none linger for closer inspection, lest they feel the edge of his cutlass <laughs> on the back of their collar. And, and this galloping Hessian, uh, surely this is just another superstition. No, 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 The townsfolk of Sleepy Hollow knew this to be true. My husband, Samuel Van Dyke, was there and fired the cannon. From his deathbed in 1803, he saw the Hessian ride by our window. He succumbed to fright that evening. Uh, And the horseman, has he ever um, stopped by for a visit? (laughs) 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 That must be Katrina von Tassel with another boot of material. Come in, Katrina. Here's the cloth for Father's new curtains, Dame Gardenia. I hope I brought enough. Oh, but soft. What light through yonder window breaks? Oh, Ichabod Crane, do you know Baltus Van Tassel's daughter, 
Katrina? Charmed, I'm sure. Oh, nay, fair lady, tis I who've been charmed. Charmed like the serpent in farthest Asia that dances when he hears an angelic melody. I hear no music, but I can see the snake dancing as we speak. <laughs> This is Sleepy Hollow's new schoolmaster, Ichabod Green, and he's staying with us Van Rippers. My, he's <laughs> fetching. Run along now, Katrina. Tell Baltus we'll have his curtains done by the new moon. Very well. My coach awaits. Good evening to you all. It was a pleasure meeting you, Ichabod Crane. No, the pleasure was truly mine. If it's in the stars, perhaps we'll have more pleasure in the future. Ooh. That girl is trouble, I see. Yeah. Nothing ever good uh, came from being a coquette. Indeed. How do you solve a problem like Katrina? <laughs> being so pretty and the daughter of the richest farmer in the community, it's no wonder she has a new suit to every night. A rich father? <laughs> It's a scandal the way she wears her petticoat so short. You can clearly see her ankles. Mm -hmm. oh, it's a scandal, I say. Petticoat, uh, I hadn't noticed. Mm -hmm. Be mindful, Lickabod Crane. A school teacher is no prize for a Dutch heiress. You don't need to be superstitious to know that. <laughs> Oh, my. I should not have stayed so late by the fire to have passed Goody Van Ripper's offer to accompany me home. The tales of ghosts and shooting stars were very vivid. And even my own spectacular tales from Cotton Mather leave me on edge. If I'm not careful, I'll scare myself into jumping at... Oh! Shadows! Oh, my heavens. Good heavens. I thought... Oh, no. Enough of the Hessian of the Hollow who rides around without his head. It must be awfully hard seeing where he's going now without his head. <laughs> Oh, dear. Oh, not a goblin. Just an owl from the churchyard. I'll have to resolve to spend less time telling ghost stories and more time. What's that? A horse? Coming towards the churchyard at this time of night? Oh, no. What manner of hellhound could this be? Surely it's the Hessian come from my head. Oh, will the Lord's prayer be enough for salvation on my soul in the next life? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Whoa, daredevil. Oh, it's worse than I thought. It's the hair devil. Oh. oh, I said daredevil, not the hair devil, you buffoon. That's oh. the name of my horse. Oh, a man of flesh and blood. <gasps> then you must be a bandit of some type here to rob me. No, friend, I'm just passing through on my way back from Tarrytown. Oh, I, I mistook you for, uh, for someone else. I'm just me, Abraham Van Brunt. At your service. Put it there, stranger. Uh, oh, uh, well, it's a powerful handshake you have, Fair Abraham. What brings a man like you out to the dead of night to haunted woods such as these? <laughs> Women. Oh. There are races in Tarrytown until sunset, then arm wrestling by lantern. And the ladies, oh, let's just say they know things in Canada that girls and the Catskills don't. <laughs> uh, what, what is your name, stranger, anyhow? Uh, Ichabod Crane, sir. Oh, yes, yes, I've heard of you. You're the schoolmaster from Connecticut. I hear they've got quite the ruffians in Connecticut. Come on, let's let's wrestle here. Let's wrestle. Uh, no, um, wrestling is more for people from uh, Massachusetts. Uh, when we socialize in Connecticut, we dance. Uh, I'm really a marvelous dancer, and I have a wonderful singing voice. <laughs> S singing? Yes. Dancing? Yes. Oh, that's not how a man wins himself a gal in New York. You've got to have strength. Oh. You've got to have presence. <laughs> You've got to be... Double jointed. Uh, well, there is a young lass I've met who does seem quite pleasant, if a bit coquettish. Uh, how does one win the heart of a woman in these parts? Ah, coquette? Mm. A thousand things tickle her fancy. Oh. You could earn a hundred hearts easier than that of a coquette. And I pity the man that wins that castle, for it would turn into a fortress he'd have to fight for at every door and window. Yeah. She'd be likely to leave and break your soul. Unless she's an ugly girl. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but wouldn't an ugly girl be just as likely to leave? Certainly, but who cares? <laughs> no, no. I don't get it Who either. is this girl you have your eyes set on? Uh, Katrina Van Tassel. Katrina? You'll stay away from the Van Tassel farm if you value your head. <gasps> My head? Oh, 
No. Do evil spirits abound? No, but you're likely to be snapped in two by her suitor. Another suitor for Katrina? Oh, who could that be? Fellow by the name of Brom Bone. Oh, not him again. Oh, he's handsome and dashing, and he has a way with the ladies that a schoolmaster does not. And he's broad as a barn with hands that can twist horseshoes. Those who found themselves on the bad side of his humor leave Sleepy Hollow black and blue. Heed my advice and dream of another girl. Her hand and her dowry are spoken for. Yeah, that's good advice. I'm too weary of an adversary of superior might to be drawn into the list with him. Best to make another plan, Ichabod. Now hurry back to whose ever barn you're sleeping in. One never knows who also patrols these woods. Mm. Wait, Abraham, you've traveled these woods by night. Have you ever noticed anything? Well, Whoa, anything? Just, just that ghost rising behind you. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, boy. Oh. Your head is safe from the hessian of the hollow Ichabod Crane. Oh, thank heavens. He wouldn't know how to take it off without cracking your chicken bone neck. <laughs> Come on, daredevil. Giddy up. Giddy up. Once he returned home, his head still safely attached to his chicken bone neck, Ichabod Crane quickly set off on winning the heart of Katrina Van Tassel. So the next day, he dismissed his class early and walked beyond Sleepy Hollow to Tarrytown to meet her father and begin their courtship. I say, good man, is this the Van Tassel farm? It certainly is. Who asks? Yeah, come on, Crane, Sleepy Hollow schoolmaster. Oh, why, the school is some ten miles from this point. Surely you're tired, Master Crane. Perhaps I can offer you some apple cider. I was just pressing some. I'm Baltus Van Tassel. Let me pour you some. Ooh, okay. Mmm, mm, delicious. From your own apple, sir? Oh, yes, of course. The orchard's over those hills yeah. beyond the vegetables. There's the stable. We do quite well by casting fishing nets on, uh, off the riverbank there. Yeah. Oh, and you can see the barn here where mm -hmm. much of the livestock remains. Oh, quite impressive. You do very well for yourself here, Van Tassel. I'm sure your holdings are worth... Thousands of dollars. It's Baltus, please. Yes, being close to the river has made this land quite fertile over the years. It's more than enough for myself and my daughter. And she's the reason for your visit, no doubt. Your daughter? <laughs> what makes you think I have some interest in her? <laughs> <laughs> because most of the young gentlemen who walk from Sleepy Hollow to the farm do. Many men, many men try to court her, Ichabod, and none have won her heart. Well, I don't come calling, Baltus. I'm here to offer my services as schoolmaster. A young Dutch heiress needs tutelage. She needs to be exposed to the arts, to culture, to read poetry, to learn the dances of high society. These are the things to which a young girl with promise needs to be exposed. Ducks and geese are foolish things that must be looked after, but girls can take care of themselves. I can't see why she'd need to learn the ways of high culture. But what if she wanted to? You wouldn't deny her, would you? I've never denied my daughter anything. Come inside the house. We'll talk it over with her. You? My suitor? What kind of girl do you take me for that would have such a sorry excuse of a man like you for a suitor? <laughs> well, I'm the kind of man who's broken horses wilder than the likes of you. Do you take yourself for the kind of woman who couldn't be broken by a man like me? Just like a man, to think the tools of the field by the day are the same as the tools of the barn after sunset. Ah, uh, the best handyman only needs one tool to get the job done. <laughs> Spoken like a man who spends too much time with his tool at the sharpening stone and not enough time working up a sweat with it in the field. You need no time at the sharpening stone, Katrina Van Tassel. Your tongue is the only tool I know that gets sharper with each use. You're uncouth, Brom Bones. You're as gentle as a bear and you're all paws. Ah, uh, the bear knows in which tree to find the honey. <laughs> Wouldn't you just like to sample such sweet nectar? I've seen you in the village with those other girls, parading for them with your shirt unbuttoned. Oh, Brom, flex 
your muscles for me again. Oh, Brom, would you lift that barrel of nails? And then they show you their bare ankle, and you disappear behind the peddler's shop. <laughs> that wasn't me. It had to have been some other incredibly handsome lad who was popular with all the girls and is double-jointed. <laughs> Really, Brom, I've seen you juggle more tarts than the hollow baker. Why can't you see fit to court me, and only me? If it's proper for you to cavort with every lass in the village, why can't I cavort with every lad? You're welcome to cavort, if a lad should seek your hand. But none do, because the sight of your horse tethered to my post is sign for all suitors to pass by in despair. No one will cross a lion in his amours. Oh, Katrina, you flirt like a woman, but pout like a babe wanting to be fed. And we know not to bring the bottle too soon, lest we spoil the child. <sighs> you wait, Brom Bones. And here in the parlor, we hold our parties. It's spacious with low projecting ease. Oh, uh, Katrina, I didn't know you were back here. Have you met the schoolmaster, Master Ichabod Crane? Yes, I do believe I've had the pleasure. Oh, uh, Miss Katrina, your father was just showing me around your lovely farmhouse. It's really quite remarkable. Resplendent with pewter, the claw-footed chairs, mahogany tables. It reminds me of the mansions of New Haven. That's in Connecticut, where they have a fearsome militia who square dance in defense of the Stars and Stripes. <laughs> and have you met uh, Brom Van Brunt? Yes, I've met Abraham, or Brom... You're the one they call Brom Bones. At your service, schoolmaster. Brom was just leaving, father. Well, then perhaps I could keep you company. I've brought a book of poetry I thought you might enjoy. Poetry? Poetry? No one has ever brought me poetry. Uh, but I'm embarrassed to say I'm not a very good reader. Oh, then I shall stay and read to you. I think I spotted a comfortable tree which faces the setting sun. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I'm not going to let you... Uh, come on, Brom. Oh. I'll show you to the door, although I'm sure you already know where it is. Goodbye, Brom. Perhaps you can stop by the bakery for a little treat to pick you up. Katrina, please. Oh, come now, Ichabod. The setting sun... Always makes me sleepy, and I may have to just curl up on your shoulder. Oh, it's too good for a mere schoolmaster to imagine. The plump breasts, the tender thighs, and so much fat on the bone. In all my day, I've never seen such wonderful livestock. <laughs> And the home stacked with bags of wool, linsey woolsey on the loom, oh, the smell of peaches in the hallway, and the dried apples and Indian corn that hang along the walls. Oh, he who wins the heart of Katrina Van Tassel will be Lord of Sleepy Hollow. Oh, no, the woods. Could it be the Hessian trooper come to my head? Oh, you there, schoolmaster. Oh. In what sort of trickery are you engaged for the heart of Katrina? Oh, Brom, you startled me again with your twilight ride. However, last time it was your trick on me, not revealing you were courting at the Van Tassel farm. No one in Sleepy Hollow is to court Katrina. Anyone who tries, I'll make my fist into a sandwich for him to feast on. Katrina is mine. Well, to hear her tell it, you're a Lothario who's made his way with everything in a skirt and necklace. She wants a man who'll devote attention to her. Ha! 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 And you're just the man for the job. Well, if loving Katrina is a job, I'd forsake the Sabbath and work till I'm too old to raise a tool. And I'll see to it your tool rusts before I let you woo Katrina away from me. Just say the word and I'll be down from this saddle. I'll double you up and lay you on a shelf in your own school. Uh, uh, fight you for Katrina? Um, uh, but that's not the way we settle things where I'm from. Well, how do you bloody well settle things in Connecticut? A jig at 20 paces? I'll send you home with your teeth in your handkerchief. Yeah, uh, but but I have to warn you. I've read the books of Cotton Mather. I know all about witchcraft and the supernatural. What if you were to charge at me and poof, you're a toad, or stars might shoot out of my coat sleeves? Oh, that talk of spirits and goblins may scare the spinsters, Ichabod, but not Brom Bones. If any stars shoot out of you, they'll shoot right out of your... No, 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 wait, 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 Brom. Brawley won't solve this dispute. I'm much too smart to get into fisticuffs with a man of your size. And someone of your impeccable reputation would be outcast by these people if you were to harm as frail a man as I. Mm, well, you think it's over now. 
But this is only the beginning. You won't take Katrina's hand and the Van Tassel farm. If I have to shake every ghost out of these New York woods, I shall. You'll regret the day you came to Sleepy Hollow, Ichabod Crane. Now, giddy up, daredevil! You're listening to the New Hampshire Radio Theater's presentation of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. This show is made possible by a grant from Jenica Corporation. Act One was made possible by a grant from Fleet Bank of New Hampshire. We'll continue with Act Two right after this. We now begin with the second act of the New Hampshire Radio Theater's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, made possible by a grant from the New England Heart Institute at Catholic Medical Center. Additional support for this act is from Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Hampshire. As we continue, Diedrich Knickerbocker is telling the tale of Ichabod Crane to patrons in a tavern. So, did Brom Bones fight Ichabod for Katrina's hand? No! Brom was a rogue, not a criminal. He knew Ichabod would not be drawn into a brawl, no matter how he goaded him. Each day, the schoolmaster would visit the Van Tassel farm, and each day, Brom Bones would be turned away. But the mighty Brom Bones was not to be outdone, for he had many tricks in his bag. <laughs> Dog here, Brower! Ichabod Crane, why do you approach with such haste? My schoolhouse is haunted by your dead cow! Does it say that in your book? I'm certain of it. Strange things have happened, and I believe the jersey we slaughtered at the Van Horns has returned to haunt me. Why would you believe such an odd tale? Well, I lock up the schoolhouse tight as a drum every night. I even place traps of sticks and nettings on the windows to prevent anyone from coming in. Last week, I arrived to find all the tables and chairs were placed topsy-turvy. My books were placed upside down on their shelves. Uh, well, at first, I assumed a coven of witches was using my classroom to conjure spirits of the devil. Yeah. That seems like a reasonable assumption. <laughs> well, and this morning, I lit a fire in my stove only to find some manner of demon had stopped up the pipe. Oh, the smoke filled the room and I nearly expired on a stack of compositions. But, but, but how is my dead cow to blame? It was then that the wind kicked up and I heard the call of the banshee that seemed fit to torment me in my quest to educate the children of this hamlet. It called... Moo. You damn fool, Crane. That was the wind blowing in the eaves. Moo, indeed. You have to stop reading that Cotton Mather. It's made your brain go all soft. And how is a cow going to clog up a pipe anyway? She has no hands to collect small twigs and hay. Uh, nevertheless, I'm off to see the widow Van Tyke for a potion to ward off evil livestock. Well, it's best you see her too. Those chickens at the Van Housens did not take too kindly once they realized what that boiling pot and the axe were for. <laughs> the pranks amused Bones enough to mend his broken heart. But they didn't deter his rival. In the end, it was Valtus Van Tassel that created an opening. Here, Van Ripper, a word with you. Ah, uh, Ichabod Crane. The sight of you has not darkened my doorway in some time. You wait the wages of two months in the fortnight you were here, and you're still as thin as a beanpole. Well, I realize my hearty appetite might have caused a hardship for your family. I hope you won't hold that against me if I were to discuss something of importance with you. <laughs> what is it now? Has my prized heifer appeared to you in a dream? Uh, no, uh, nothing like that. Uh, I, I wanted to know if you could lend me a steed. What need you of a horse of mine? Well, this came for me today. An invitation to a cotillion at the Van Tassel farm. I believe you call them quilting frolics here. If I'm to make a grand impression for my host, I need to make a grand entrance. And I only have the one good suit, and I don't want to get mud on it as I walk through the marsh. I don't care why you need the horse. I asked you why you need a horse of mine. You haven't visited my house since you left for the Gardenias. Well, I'm again staying with the Duchess, and they have so little to spare. Well, truth be told, they can barely afford to feed me adequately. The friggin' of sweet cakes couldn't feed you adequately. Yeah. Well, the Duchess have no horse, and I'd rather not ride an ox to the quilting frolic. I thought maybe you'd have a horse you'd let me ride. Have you ever ridden a horse before? Never, sir. 
follow me. I can lend you gunpowder for one night. And I'll use my old plow horse. Here. Here he is. Oh, my. He's a beauty. A real beauty. Is he supposed to sag in the middle like that? He's long on, yes, but he's still kicking. Yeah, but I mean that sag. If he's drooping in the middle. It kind of looks like a hammock. <laughs> and his head, it's shaped like a hammer. Would you stop your complaining? I'll give you my Sunday saddle. You'll look like a baron. <laughs> Oh, he nearly bit me. <laughs> He's an old horse with perhaps some mule in him. He'll do as he pleases. Damn Fleabag has outlived everything but his viciousness. Now, put a foot in that stirrup and get on. Okay, how's this? The other foot, Crane, unless you plan on riding side, sir. Oh, 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 there. there. Oh, he's blind in one eye, but has the gleam of a genuine devil in the other. Give a light snap on the reins. Okay. Bouncy ride. If you stop flapping your elbows, you'll think a bird about to take off. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Giddy up, big fella. What? You can't yell at a plow horse like this one. What? He'll freeze up when you shout at him. If you want to keep him going, you're going to have to speak softly to him. Well, this is just the oddest horse I've ever met. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Giddy up! And so Ichabod rode off on the plow horse. It was altogether such an apparition as to seldom be met in broad daylight. He bounced on gunpowder clear across the hollow. As he arrived at the home of Air Van Tassel, he saw nearly everyone he knew was there. The parlor was filled with withered little dames and buxom lasses, farmers in homespun coats and breeches, and of course, Brom Bones. And then I said, if you're looking for a brawl, you've come to the right place. The Sleepy Hollow Boys can whip anyone from Albany. Yeah! <laughs> so they dropped the keg and we drank it all. <laughs> Brom Bones and his gang, what a wonderful story. Oh, look who's here. It's the schoolmaster. Ichabod, so glad you could join us. Oh, Baltus, your parlor's magnificent. <laughs> well, won't you have some of our feasts? Oh, my lord, what a bounty. Sweet cakes and short cakes, ginger cakes and honey cakes, apple pies, peach pies, pumpkin pies. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spoil your appetite on the sugared suppositions, Ichabod. There's ham, beef, and shad to try first. Then you may snack. <laughs> Look so dapper this evening. Oh, wasn't that gunpowder I saw you riding up on, wasn't it? Oh, Dame Van Ripper, can you believe this feast? Oh, I know your husband likes to make fun of my powerful appetite, but tonight it may have met its match. <laughs> There's a motherly teapot warming here. Would you like me to pour you some? Oh, please do. Oh, can you imagine the wealth that will be passed down to Katrina's suitors? <laughs> well, yes, but there are plenty of girls from more modest homes. Nice girls, too. Mm, this tea tastes a bit odd. Did you put a beaver scat in his tea yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I think I see Katrina. Excuse me. School teacher, I hear the witches have taken home in your classroom. Are you afraid you'll open a book and turn into a toad? <laughs> What's he mean by that? Let's... Ichabod, I'm so happy you could be here. I've been telling Father we needed someone of a higher class to come to the quilting frolic. Uh, Katrina, allow me to kiss your hand. Mwah. Oh, how very charming. Oh, two can play at this game. Allow me also to kiss your hand. Oh, why, Abraham Van Brunt, what great taste you've shown. <clears throat> Might I say you taste pretty good yourself. I can't wait to try the rest of your arm. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 oh. <laughs> Easy, Philly. That's just Brahm's way of saying pleasant evening. Hold on, Brahm. Tonight's a night for merrymaking and nothing else. Behave. How uncouth. Really, Ichabod, <clears throat> I must apologize for Mr. Van Brunt. He doesn't know how to treat anyone properly. Oh, Katrina, the hornpipe. Will you dance with me? Ichabod, you know how to dance? Why, of course. Back in New England, I was told I had the grace of St. Vitus. 
then show us your skill. Give us the hornpipe. Well, Katrina, take my hand. Ooh, dancing Ichabod. I don't know. Oh, Katrina, you're not really going to dance with him in front of all these people, are you? I assure you, Katrina, there's not a man in New York who can hold a candle to me on the dance floor. It, it, is that a shot at me? Why, you little... I'd no- love to dance with you, Ichabod. Oh, Katrina, let's talk. I can change. Please, don't be sparking with... Him. You had your chance, Brom. Let's dance, Ichabod. Oh, I'm going out for some air. St. Vitus's dance. Widow Van Dyke, where have I heard that term before? Oh, it's the cholera. It means people who have spasms. Oh, oh my... Ichabod, I can hardly keep up. Stand back, my dear, while I finish this jig. Um, mm, marvelous, Ichabod. I've never seen such dancing. Yeah, they must be quite talented in Connecticut. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Ichabod. I'm so glad to see you here tonight. What do you think of the Van Tassel's party? Uh, at this moment, I was just thinking how unfortunate it is that it's not a masquerade ball. I hope you save a dance for me later. Uh, well, we'll see. I, I have my eyes set on someone. Oh, well, I hope it's me. Cynthia, leave Master Crane alone. If he has an eye on a girl, he'll do the right thing and let her know. In time. Now go get your mother a cup of punch. Yes, father. Oh, thank you, here, Van Ripper. <laughs> Did you happen to see which way Katrina Van Tassel disappeared to? Whom you woo is not the concern of a farmer. But take my advice. A school teacher best remember his place when he attempts to woo a Dutch heiress. Especially if that teacher be as ham fisted as ye. Pickabod, have a mug of this cider, made from the ripest apples of Van Tassel's orchard. Doubtful a sip or two of this nectar should quench the thirst of a dancer as powerful as ye. Oh, thank you. Mmm. Oh, it does taste better than the tea Dame Van Ripper offered me. <laughs> I saw the way you danced with Katrina Van Tassel. I think you two make a nice couple. I haven't much experience with women, Stephen, but uh, I think she fancies me. And she's just the right age for a husband, too. Imagine all of this. The livestock. The farmhouse. The son-in-law of Baltus Van Tassel could live a life of leisure. Oh, if I win her hand, I'll be the richest man in Sleepy Hollow. Oh, I must convince Baltus to let me marry his daughter. I know I've already won her heart. <laughs> it's funny that you should own her heart while her eye searches the room for brom bones. What? what are you talking about, Widow Van Dyke? Well, while you danced with Katrina, she gave a knowing glance or two toward Brom and turned gleeful when he left. Ichabod, ha- have a ginger cake. You must have worked up quite an appetite dancing with Katrina. Oh, that I have, Peter. Mmm, oh, simply scrumptious. Oh, oh, man could get used to eating all this delicious food. Mm, mm, mm. You could get very used to it if you marry Katrina Van Tassel. You'd be the fanciest gentleman around town. Oh, if only I could make it so. Imagine the value of this farm, the orchards, the fishing, the crops, and the animals. Oh, I know it would be worth tens. No, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh. Uh, and you could spend your days here, in the parlor, throwing fancy parties and being the gracious host. What? Oh, good heavens, no! When I'm that rich, I'll snap my fingers at all those who come to my door asking me for money. But but the farm, what will you do with it? Oh, I have no intention of working the land. I'll sell the farm and move Katrina and our children to Kentucky or Tennessee, or perhaps the Louisiana Territory. But on the bright side, I'd be happy to sell to you and Van Ripper and Van Bummel. If you can come up with the money, you can decide which part of the land you like. Break up the Van Tassel property? I don't think that's what Baltus had in mind. Uh, just what did I have in mind, Peter? Oh, nothing. We were just commenting on your two most beautiful possessions, your farm and your daughter. <laughs> It'll take a dozen men to conquer one, and twice as many to conquer the other. Ichabod, some of the gentlemen will be retiring by the fire to share news and tell stories. 
Fill your glass, then come join us. Oh, uh, I'd, I'd be honored, Baltus. Katrina, why must you humiliate me in front of the entire town by cavorting with that man? I don't know what you're talking about. You said I was free to cavort with any lad who sought my hand. Curses! You make a bitter meal of my own words. Run along, Brom. I have the feeling that something wonderful is going to happen tonight. I'll win your heart yet, Katrina. I promise. Ichabod, come closer. You've made this such a wonderful party. Are you enjoying yourself? Oh, such pleasure surely cannot be known in life. This must be heaven, and this must be my happy death. Oh, it's just a little heaven with just a little death. Little death. Uh, le petit mort. Le petit mort? What does that mean? The little death. It's what the French call it when you have a... Uh, I mean, it's uh, when a woman experiences a... Uh, Ichabod. Yeah. Uh, Kiss me. I've been waiting all my life for just a little death. I believe the schoolmaster is smitten with Van Tassel's daughter, even if she is a coquette. Oh, and he never drank the love spell we left for him. I knew that beaver scout was too strong. Oh, then there's no hope for my Cynthia. She'll never win his heart if it belongs to another. Oh, don't worry, child. The clouds are parted to reveal a harvest moon in a sky of shooting stars. I believe it's a time of change. Ye shall reap what ye has sown. <laughs> Now, I'm no Federalist, but I don't think Mr. Madison's war was any great victory for this nation or for Sleepy Hollow. Or did you know there were 20,000 British troops perched above us in Canada, waiting for the spring campaign? Well, had we not been so successful at Ghent, the cross of St. Andrew tonight would be flying at the meeting house. But, but, Baltus, you underestimate the era of good feeling that's happened since 1812. The United States is strong and ready to defend its honor. It's hard to argue that President Monroe isn't a respected leader. He won all the electoral votes in the last election. No, no, not true. I heard some chap from New Hampshire cast a vote for John Quincy Adams. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be just like someone from New Hampshire, too, thinking he knows better than the rest of the country who ought to be president. <laughs> <laughs> well, you won't catch me voting for John Q. Adams. It'll be a black day for this republic if we elect a man just because his father was president. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Well, Hans is right. We sent our sleepy hollow boys to die at White Plains so we could live in a land without a monarchy. A leadership should not be inherited. Hmm. We all have such New York sensibilities. I, I wonder what the gentleman from Connecticut feels about current affairs. Yeah. <laughs> this country was founded on the idea that leadership should be shared. I have no opinion of Secretary Adams, but we should give his father credit. For the first time in history, he accepted a peaceful transition of power from George Washington, then peacefully passed the power on to Thomas Jefferson. That's why this experiment in democracy has been successful so far. That's what your Sleepy Hollow Boys died for. Uh, uh. And they died gloriously. Mm. Uh, tell them the story of Dafu Martling. Oh, he was a blue-bearded Dutchman who nearly captured a British frigate along the Hudson. But his old iron nine-pounder burst on the sixth discharge. Would have been our finest hour of the revolution. Fiddlesticks! Mm. I tell you our finest hour was at White Plains. Oh, not this story again. It's no story. I was there, and I saw it happen. I led the Sleepy Hollow Boys in a charge on the left flank of the Loyalist Army. But the ground between us had turned to deep mud and slowed our attack. Just then a red coat turned his musket on me and fired. Ooh. With nowhere to run, I swung my saber and, and parried the, the musket, musket ball in mid air. air. I knocked, knocked it back at the infantrymen, infantry killing, killing two, two of them. them. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And I have the cutlass right here to show you the dent and to prove it. Put away that thing, Brower. No one here wants to see your sword. <laughs> Even if it does have a bend in it. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, you know, just beyond the stone wall on the post road is the giant tulip tree, Major Andre's tree. Now, he was captured as a British spy and lynched there. It's still viewed with a combination of respect and superstition. Ghost story. I must say I'm fascinated by them. There seem to be so many in Sleepy Hollow. 
That's because the hollow is located where an old Indian chief held powwows with his prophets and wizards. Ooh. Yeah, th this was in the days long before the discovery by Henry Hudson. And there's a mysterious woman in white who haunts the dark glen at Raven Rock. Oh. In colonial times, she lived there with her husband and children. Before a great snowfall, her man ventured into the glen to forage for food and firewood. He never returned, either captured or killed by the Mohicans. The woman Ooh. in white perished in the snowstorm. Oh, that's that's horrible. Van Ripper has a story. No, I don't. I told you not to say anything, Brower. You, Hans? Well, I, I thought you were a disbeliever in ghosts. Tell them what you saw. What did he see? Well, I'm not one for fanciful tales, but four nights ago while returning home from a uh, foray in Terrytown, <laughs> I, don't get it. I heard a horse pull up behind my cart. And I turn around to see the rider. The galloping Hessian! Did the rider have a... head? Yes, he had a head. But he carried it under his arm. Oh, he chased me over lurch and break over hills into Wiley Swamp. Finally, I approached the church bridge. As I crossed its wooden beam, it was then that the horseman reared up in the saddle and held his head high in the air. And then... He turned into a skeleton and disappeared in a clap of thunder. I was so frightened I fell off my cart and into the brook. I too have seen this horseman. Mm. You too, Brom? Oh, I paid him little mind. The Hessian really is an errant jockey. I was returning one night from some fun in Sing Sing <laughs> when I came upon him in a clearing just past Master Crane's schoolhouse. The Hessian at my schoolhouse? Oh, I knew it wasn't the cow. Well, it seems he had been riding past the school when our paths crossed. He offered to race me for a bowl of punch. And you all know how the only thing I like more than a race is a hard drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, Daredevil was up to the task and beat the goblin horse all hollow. And I should have won that punch, too, for as I crossed the church bridge, the midnight trooper bolted and turned into a flash of fire. <gasps> An extraordinary tale. But he remains on the roads and continues his nightly patrols. When will he stop? When he's caught up to one of us and wins that race to the churchyard? Who will he catch? You, Peter Vanderdonk? <gasps> uh, no. Or you, Derek Van Bummel? <gasps> or even you, Ichabod Crane? <laughs> and what will he claim for his trophy? Not a jug of punch, I can assure you that. He won't be happy until your skull rests where his once did during that war. Oh, thank you for your invitation, Voltus. It was the nicest quilting frolic yet. And the cider was the strongest yet. Thank you, Yvonne Tassel. The thing was wonderful. If only that special person had danced with me. You're welcome, my dear. And I'm sorry, but that person couldn't be that special to have passed on a waltz with you. <laughs> oh, my compliments, Baltus. So you really do have a splendid home, and you know how to dress it for company. Easy, Ichabod. I see you counting the old silver and mended china. I'm not giving up my farmhouse yet. Father, have you seen Brom? Oh, Katrina, may I bid you a uh, <clears throat> good evening now? Oh. Um, uh, Father? I haven't seen him, my sweet. Go on and bid Ichabod <laughs> good night. <clears throat> oh, Katrina, here we are on the edge of night in another world with one life to live. Ichabod, um, have you seen Brom? Oh, he left about an hour ago. He soaked off once I expressed to him my true feelings for you. He left? But he couldn't have left. Why didn't you tell me he was leaving? What did you say to him? Yeah, I told him I'd fall in love with you and I was going to ask your hand in marriage. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, uh, what did Brom say? Was he jealous? Did he threaten to fight you? Oh, he said he'd get even, but he always says that. Uh, he didn't. He doesn't understand the spiritual connection we have, the bond that goes deeper than anything. Ichabod Crane! Surely you jest. I am the daughter of a land baron, born into high society. You 
are a schoolmaster. Did you really think I would extend a hand in marriage? Uh, but 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 we have a, a connection, don't we? I, you love uh, the poetry and the dancing and all the. Did other... you really think my father would hand over his estate to someone from Connecticut? The farm and the manor and the orchard and the crops. You who spreads hay for penniless farmers for an extra meal. What did you think you would do with all of this property?、Uh, well, I honestly didn't think I'd work the land myself. Not that I was scheming, mind you, but I, I just thought maybe that me, you know, I... Katrina Van Tassel, married to a, a, a schoolmaster. Ha! You must have lost your head. Oh! Come on, gunpowder. Let's go. Mounted his broken-down steed and slowly made his way back toward the Dutcher's farmhouse. And along the dark, lonely rural road, all the stories of ghosts and goblins from that day came back to him and crowded his mind. Oh, never have I felt so lonely and dismal. They were right about defending the Coquette's castle at every door and window. This has been an altogether terrible day, and for once. I don't think I should have eaten so many ginger cakes. <laughs> oh, oh my! I seem to have made it to the setting for so many of those tales. <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, that tulip tree is—it's Major Andre's tree, haunted for sure. Oh, the spirits won't harm an innocent, would they? <clears throat> Just an echo. What's that in white there on the tree? Oh, oh my goodness! It's nothing. It's it's just the scoring on the bark made by a, a lightning strike or something. It's not the woman in white. <gasps> What was that? Oh, it, it's just the bough rubbing against another on the tree. Oh, I don't remember having to pass this brook on the way here, gunpowder. Oh, there doesn't seem to be any way around it. It's much darker on this leg of the journey. I'm not entirely sure I've gone the right way. Oh, this seems to be the very spot where Andre was captured.、Mm. From what I see, those chestnuts and oaks would have made excellent posts for the army interceptors. <laughs> well, gunpowder, there doesn't appear to be any way around it, and it doesn't seem to be too deep at all. We have no choice but to go across. So, <clears throat> giddy up. All right, that's fine. But this time we need to go forward. Hello, H- hello, I- is someone there? In the dark shadow of the grove, on the margin of the brook, he beheld something huge, misshapen, black, and towering. His hair rose up on his head with terror. Who, who are you? <laughs> I really want to know. <laughs> I, I said, "Who are you?" <laughs> <clears throat> All right, gunpowder, you win. We'll go your way. Though the night was dark and dismal, the form of the unknown might now, in some degree, be ascertained. He appeared to be a horseman of. Large dimensions, and mounted on a black horse of powerful frame, Ichabod, who had no relish for this strange midnight companion, now quickened his steed. The stranger, however, quickened his horse to an equal pace. Ichabod then pulled up, thinking to lag behind, but the other did the same. There was something of this pertinacious companion that was mysterious. And appalling. <clears throat>、uh, la, 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 It wasn't la, until la, they mounted a rising ground, when the figure of his fellow traveler was brought in relief against the sky. What? Oh no, that can't be! Ichabod was horror struck in perceiving that the rider was headless. <gasps> But this horror was still more increased on observing that the head, which should have rested on his shoulders, was carried before him on the pommel of his saddle. 
Mother of the Maccabees. It's him, the Hessian of the Hollow, the Midnight Trooper, the Headless Horseman! Oh, come on, Gunpowder, we must take flight, or surely it will mean our lives. Yeah! What? What are you doing? Why have you stopped? Yeah, Gunpowder, yeah! Giddy up, giddy up! What? Oh, you stop when I yell? Oh, curse that Van Ripper. I mean, giddy up, Gunpowder! Oh! Away they dash through thick and thin, stones flying, sparks flashing. And now they reach the road which turns off to Sleepy Hollow. But Gunpowder, now showing some of the metal from his younger days, seems possessed by the devil. There's the road to the left. To the left. No, not that way. To the left. No, don't stop. I mean, um... Yo, Gunpowder! No! Not that way, I mean... Not that way! The panic of the steed. He had given his unskillful rider an apparent advantage in the chase. But just as he got halfway through the hollow, the girth of the saddle gave way! He felt it slipping from under him, and he grabbed gunpowder around the neck as the saddle fell to the earth. Oh, that was Hans Van Ripper's Sunday saddle. I'll be killed for sure if I live through this night. The goblin was hard on his haunches, and Ichabod had much ado to maintain his seat, sometimes slipping to one side, sometimes the other, sometimes jolted high on the ridge of the horse's backbone with a violence he said would be leave asunder. He could hear the black steed panting and blowing close behind him. Then, an opening in the trees. Hopes that the church bridge would be at hand. Oh, if I can reach that bridge, I'll be safe. He always disappears once we make the bridge. Ichabod and gunpowder rushed across the bridge. Oh, I did it, gunpowder. We did it. We made the bridge. Now the headless horseman will vanish in a flash of fire and brimstone. Then, an odd thing happened. The goblin did not vanish. Instead, he rose up in his stirrups, turning to Ichabod, he hurled his head at him. What? No! That's terrible. Being chased to your death by a phantom horse rider. After all that happened to him, whatever became of him and Sleepy Hollow. The next morning, the old horse was found without his saddle at his master's gate. Ichabod did not make an appearance at breakfast. Dinner hour came, but no Ichabod. The boys assembled at the schoolhouse and strolled idly about the banks of the brook, but no schoolmaster. Father, there was no sign of him. It's not like him to miss school, ever. Do you think something's happened to him? No, I wouldn't be out here in the woods if I didn't. I'm beginning to fear for the safe return of Ichabod and my Sunday saddle. I've searched the main road and found nothing. Over here! We've been following these tracks from the brook. Looks like two horses. The hooves are deeply dented in the road. Uh, They must have been moving at great speed. Look there! What's that trampled in the ground? It's my saddle. It's off the horse, but the tracks continue. It can't be much farther. Much farther from what? It's going up to the left, toward the bridge, leading to the churchyard. The the churchyard? Hans, isn't that where you said you ran into the... the... Who, Father? Who did you meet there? Uh, Look look, look at that there. What do you make of it? What a mess. Something happened here. And what do you make of this, Hans? It's a wool hat. Oh. It's Ichabod's wool hat. And what is this mess? It's his brains! His head has been splattered all over the churchyard! Hold your tongue, Peter! It's not his skull! It's a pumpkin! (laughs) A pumpkin! A pumpkin wearing a wool cap! This is a very strange turn of events. I think we all know who's responsible for this. To the residents of Sleepy Hollow, there was no doubt that Ichabod had been carried off by the galloping Hessian. And for many years later, the old country wives still told the tale. And then he and the horsemen rounded the bend leading to the church bridge. Ah, the haunted bridge, haunted by the midnight evil. That's why the road to the church has been altered, so as to approach from the mill pond. But... 
The Hessian grabbed hold of the schoolmaster before he could make it safely across the bridge. Oh, did you know that Ichabod left all his worldly effects at the Duchess? Henry recovered his books, Cotton Mather's History of Witchcraft, along with volumes on dreams and fortune-telling. But Hans burned it in a fire. Hmm. That's when we pulled our boy from school. He said he never heard of any good coming from this reading and writing. And the love poem. (laughs) Don't forget he left behind a half-written love poem for me. It wasn't any good. Surprising for a schoolmaster. I'm trying to finish my tale. I beg your pardon. Then, before disappearing into a clap of thunder, the Hessian finally claimed the prize he wanted, the schoolmaster's head, (gasps) filled with all that knowledge, and he replaced it with the gob that had perched upon his own shoulders, a ripe pumpkin. <laughs> That's right, the pumpkin. Mrs. Van Brunt, your husband always enjoys this story a little too much, if you ask me. Brom, really, don't embarrass me. Oh, I must apologize, Katrina, my dear. I always find that tale rather fascinating, just like a cotton mather. Yes, husband. You always seem to smile when that pumpkin is mentioned. One might believe you know more than you tell. Oh, I never travel near the church yard at light. Uh, It's one thing to have a revolutionary war ghost chasing you. It's another to have a schoolmaster seeking your head. That school has long been deserted and Mm. has fallen into decay. Like the bridge, it's looked upon with a certain awe and superstition. It's feared that the teacher still haunts its Mm -hmm. halls. Children will not enter the schoolhouse at night. Those who pass by say on occasion they hear what sounds at a distance, like the passing of a horse, a steed matched in a race with the devil himself. But those who move closer can make out the report better. They hear the hard step of the hornpike being danced by a ghostly schoolmaster. Its echo heard through the fields and across the Hudson River. Another of the legends of Sleepy Hollow. Knickerbocker? I'm confused. It certainly was a spectacular story, and I certainly don't mind conceding defeat in our contest, but what really became of Ichabod Crane? There was an old farmer who had been down from New York to visit several years after. He was a chap from whom I heard this tale. He returned to Sleepy Hollow with the news that Ichabod Crane was still alive. He claims to have left partly through fear of the goblin and of Hans Van Ripper and partly in mortification at having been suddenly dismissed by the heiress. Ichabod moved with just the cash in his pockets to another county. There, he kept school and studied law at the same time, was admitted to the bar, turned politician, electioneered, and finally had been made the justice of the ten-pound court. And yet the folks of Sleepy Hollow either choose to forget or... Or choose to believe not what they've heard so they can continue believing in their legends. Fascinating. This is not a story at all. It's an allegory. (laughs) What are you talking about? It's a metaphor. A metaphor about the coming industrial revolution. Ichabod represents industry and Brown the agrarian society, both vying for the heart of country, Katrina. Ichabod's lazy and foolish, and in the end, Brom beats him with his country smarts. It's a wonderful allegory. (laughs) Allegory? Really, Irving, I, I don't know what you're talking about. If you're looking for a moral to the story, it is this. He that runs races with goblin troopers is likely to have rough riding of it. Ergo, for a country schoolmaster to be refused the hand of a Dutch heiress, it's a certain step towards high preferment in state. This is all very well, but still the story is a little on the extravagant. There are one or two points on which I have my doubts. Faith, Mr. Irving! As to that matter, (laughs) I don't believe one half of it myself. You're listening to the New Hampshire Radio Theater's presentation of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Act 2 was made possible by a grant from the New Hampshire Heart Institute at Catholic Medical Center. 
Additional support for this act is from Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield and Northeast Delta Dental. We'll have the epilogue to our show right after this.